Hi everyone, welcome to the Syncfusion Data Integration Platform Getting Started session. In this video, we are going to explore the user interface and functionalities of the data integration platform in general, and see how to create a simple data flow to replace text in a file. In addition, we will see how to debug, schedule, execute, and monitor the data flow. Also, we will see how to view process records in each processor through data preview and list queue options and connections. And finally, the data provenance of overall data flow. Let's see the agenda of this session. Exploring user interface in the data integration platform. Sample data flow to replace text in a file. Debug a data flow. Schedule and execute the data flow. Monitoring the data flow. View process data in each processor through data preview and list queue. And finally, the data provenance option. Open the data integration platform in your browser, either by clicking the shortcut available on the desktop or by entering the URL directly into the browser. Provide your credentials to log into the application. Once logged in, you will get this home page. Let's explore the options available in this page. Here, in the top left corner, you can see the application switcher icon, followed by the application name. Click on the switcher icon to navigate between different applications which are registered with the Syncfusion user management server. On the other side, to the top right corner, you can find summary, data provenance, control settings, bulletin board, account settings, and a few more options within the burger menu. Moving down, you can find the status indicator showing the number of active threads, total data queued, transmitting count, non-transmitting count, processor count with running state, stop state, invalid state, disabled state, and finally the last refresh time of the canvas. On the right side, you will see a search option, which is useful to look for any specific components within the canvas. Next, on the left side, you can find components, templates, and server toolbar in each tab. Under components, you can find output port, input port, process group, remote process group, label, funnel, and processors. In the data integration platform, you need to understand two main terminologies. One is flow file, and the other is processor. Let me explain a flow file. In a data flow, we define each piece of user data that the user brings into the data integration platform for processing and distribution as a flow file. It is made up of two parts, attributes and content. Content is the actual user data, Attributes are key value pairs that are associated with the user data. You will get more of an idea on this when we define a simple data flow. Next is Processor. Processor is the most important building block available in the data integration platform for users to build their data flows. Processors are primarily responsible for creating, sending, receiving, transforming, routing, splitting, merging, and processing flow files. Let's see the processor available in the data integration platform. Under the Components tab, processors are categorized based on the data source or type of operation they perform. Here, the processors are grouped under Amazon, File System, Hadoop, Database, Elasticsearch, Attributes, and etc. You can expand each category to find the list of processors in it. Under the Templates tab, you can find a lot of sample templates shipped and built with our data integration platform. Templates can be set as reusable data flows. You can simply drag and drop them into the canvas to deploy and run the data flow with minor configurations. In addition, you can create your own template and download it as an XML file, which you can share or upload to another data integration platform instance for deployment purposes. For example, Consider a scenario where you'd like to create a template of a data flow you defined, and you want to share your template to your colleagues. 
You can simply use the Create Template option by selecting the data flows defined to create a template. Mention the template name and you will find an entry here in the Templates tab. Click the Download option to download the template as an XML file. You can share this XML file to your colleagues and they can simply upload it into their server for deployment. In the future, we have a plan to introduce a registry server, which acts like a version control for Dataflow, which will be more resourceful and easy to share across multiple data integration instances. Under the Servers tab, you can add any remote data integration platform instance URL to simple manage in a single place. Also, there's a search option under Components, which is designed to search the component by name as well as by their tag names. It is easier for end users to quickly find components as per their needs. Now, I am going to add a process group to the canvas and simply name it as Replace Text. The process group can be used efficiently to categorize the data flow defined under it. Mostly, related data flows are grouped under a single process group. You can also put process groups in a nested level. Now, double click on it to enter the process group. Once entered, you can see the breadcrumb for navigation is updated. You can also use the breadcrumb to exit the process group. In the canvas, you can find two more panels. One is navigation, and the other is operate. The navigation panel is used to move around the canvas. You can zoom in, zoom out, fit the data flow, or reset to the actual size very easily. With the navigation panel, you can move to any area of the canvas. Next is the operate panel. The operate panel is used to manage the action items of each selected components. You can perform configuration, set access policies, enable or disable the component, start and stop the component, fill color, delete the component, create template, create process group, publish template, paste, and copy operations. Also, you can easily expand or collapse the navigation and operate panels. Now we have almost covered all the basics in the data integration platform to get started. For now, let's start with creating a simple data flow. I'm going to show how to replace the text piece, P-E-A-C-E, -E, with piece, P-I-E-C-E. -E. A simple transformation using the Syncfusion data integration platform. We will be using a total of four processors for this data flow. The first being get file, which is used to read the input file. The second one is replace text, which is used to find the occurrence of given text and replace them with the given value. Third is update attribute, which is used to update attributes to a flow file using the expression language support. In this sample, we will be using the processor to set file name. And the fourth is put file, which is used to write the output file. Search for git file processor under components, then drag and drop the same into the canvas. Either double click or right click to configure, then go to the configure options. In the configuration dialog, enter the input directory and file filter property. Also set keep source file property to true to retain the input file or you can set the false to delete the input file after the fetch operation is complete. You can also edit the processor name for easier reference as required. Here I am giving the action name, read input from local file location. Now search for replace text processor, then drag and drop into the canvas. Under Configuration Dialog, enter the search value as piece, P-E-A-C-E, -E, and replacement value as piece, P-I-E-C-E. -E. Again, editing the processor name for reference. Replace word piece with piece. Now I am going to serialize the transform text content back to a file, before which I need to set a file name to it. I'm going to use the update attribute processor to set the attribute value and file name as war modified.txt. Drag and drop the attribute processor to the canvas 
and under the configuration dialog, add a new property by setting the property called file name with value, warpiece modified.txt. Change the processor name to set file name. Finally, to store the output file in the local directory, we will be using the put file processor. So search for put file processor, then drag and drop into the canvas. Under configuration dialog, set the output directory and choose the conflict resolution strategy as append. Based on your needs, you can change them to other choices. Edit the processor name to store data in local file. Now, connect all the processors with a success relationship. Then auto-terminate the failure relationships and replace text in put file processor. Since put file is the last processor, we have to auto-terminate for both success and failure relationships. Now we have successfully configured the data flow, and you are ready to run your very first data flow. Before running the data flow, we are going to configure bulletin level log options. This will help us in debugging the data flow just in case any errors occur. Double click on the Git file processor and move to the Settings tab. At the bottom of the dialog, you can see the bulletin level drop down menu. Select the option based on your need. Here I'm going to choose the debug option. This will show all the information, warnings, and error messages that highlight the progress of the application at coarse grain level in the bulletin board while executing the data flow. Now we are going to schedule and execute the data flow. Double click on the processor and move to the scheduling tab. Here you can see timer driven, cron driven, and run once. Select any based on your need. For now, I'm going to choose the Run Once scheduling strategy. To run the data flow, click the Start button in Operate menu. Now, we are going to monitor how the data is moving across the processor in the data flow. You can monitor all the component statuses under the Summary tab. You can track the history of all activities done in the data integration platform through flow configuration history. Errors, warnings, information, and debug information can be viewed in the bulletin board itself, based on the level of bulletin chosen for each processor. You can use data provenance to track the data from origin to end. The entire data lineage can be tracked here. Also, you can view the input and output data of all events recorded here by exploring further in. You can also view the latest process data by each processor using the data preview option available in the context menu. Also, you can view the queued list of data and connections as well by right-clicking the connection and selecting list queue. We have explored the options of the data integration platform using the simple data flow and how easy it is to debug, monitor, schedule, and execute the data flow. Thanks for watching.